I'm Michael Campion. I am the director of the pre-invasive unit within the Gynecological Cancer Centre here at the Royal Hospital for Women. I'm Associate Professor at the University of New South Wales, which is the university with which we are affiliated. Our main clinical interests in relation to TrueScreen is the performance of TrueScreen as a biophysical screening test in the detection of cervical precancers. And our research interest is in the validation of the algorithm which underlies the performance of TrueScreen and then the performance of that testing in remote and rural populations in New South Wales. I guess over the past 40 years, my main clinical interest has been in the prevention of cervical cancer, in the detection of pre-malignant lesions and uh, treatment thereof. As a result, the new screening tools that have come online have been an area of both clinical and research interest for me. It's an amazing reality that perhaps the best of the biophysical screening tools, certainly for cervical cancer, has been developed entirely in Australia. The research and testing was conducted in many countries around the world, but the technology that underlies it has all been fully developed in Australia. Well, this is the true screen device, and it releases from its tip some uh, light wavelengths and some electrical frequencies. And those frequencies and wavelengths challenge the cells of the surface of the cervix. So the cervical cells are being pulsed from the tip of the true screen probe and it is moved around the cervix and the computer in the true screen device reads the response of those cells on the surface of the cervix to that biophysical challenge. It reads that response and it is fed with an algorithm that allows it to differentiate the response of a normal cell from a precancer cell from a cancer cell. And having worked your way around the cervix and then waited literally a couple of seconds, we get a result on the LED screen, normal or abnormal. And that result will be as accurate as a pap smear done in a, teaching, in a teaching hospital setting using advanced first world technologies. In the six years since we've been using the new uh, TrueScreen device, there is no doubt that the current device, which has been completely reformatted from the earlier technology, still performs as well as for example, a liquid-based cytology sample in a teaching hospital setting. So it will behave as well as what has been until now and still remains worldwide the gold standard, which is cytology, but it behaves as well as liquid-based cytology in a teaching hospital setting. Over the past five years, we've had a team of people who have been looking at the performance of TrueScreen in the Australian situation. We've been looking at it in terms of its performance in the colposcopy clinic. In this setting, as well as testing and validating the algorithm and the performance of the device, it actually helps inform colposcopy. So if, for example, we've got a woman with an equivocal screening test and she has a positive TrueScreen, and if we can't find any obvious abnormality, we'll go back and have a second look because the true screen is very accurate and is usually indicating that there's some small abnormality which we might be missing. So it helps inform our uh, efforts in the colposcopy clinic setting. The screening setting is the most important and the team has also been looking at the performance of TrueScreen compared to liquid-based cytology and HPV DNA testing in remote and rural uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous populations in New South Wales. And again, the performance of TrueScreen in those settings, in the, more, in the screening setting, is every bit as good as those uh, other more traditional screening tools. The main benefit of the true screen device is its acceptance by women. First of all, it is non-painful, so none of these examinations of course are pleasant, but just visualising the cervix and touching it with a probe is not going to cause any significant pain or discomfort and as a result women find it the least intrusive of the screening approaches. 
Uh, secondly, and maybe most importantly, the device gives an immediate result. There is no need for cumbersome or expensive laboratory support systems. There's no need to transport a specimen to a remote lab and then get that result back to the provider and to the patient. The result is immediate. It's sufficiently accurate, that particularly in resource poor settings. If the result is abnormal, you can easily justify moving straight to treatment rather than having to bring the patient back at a later date for treatment, which can often involve significant inconvenience and cost, and as a result is a major inhibitor to the treatment of screen-detected abnormalities using the other modalities in resource-poor settings.